أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله علي العظيم My name is Suleiman Wadudi And I live in Ontario, Eastern Ontario, for the past 40 years. The most distinctive characteristic of my person is that I am Muslim and profoundly added to that is that I am Muslim on the path of Ahl al-Bayt, the family of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. This journey began for me at a very young age. I was 20 years old, coming from the island of Trinidad in the Caribbean. A young, curious, probative young man, hurt, disoriented, marginalized, and discontented was my state at age 20. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his mercy, through his magnificence, deemed it proper for me to be guided and to know the truth of this deen, to recognize the personalities that were prototypical of its ideas, its concepts, and its truths. At a very young age, I recognized it. And after some time of apprehension, I decided on a Juma day many, 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 many years ago, over 40 years, that it was time for me to begin this journey, in spite of the fact that I felt I was nowhere prepared for it, nowhere ready to assimilate its virtues and its discipline. But its attraction was so beautiful, so powerful, that in spite of my inability to do justice to it, I decided that I wanted to be on its path. So I began. On that Juma day, many years ago, I went to a masjid downtown Toronto called Jami Mosque, amongst our Ahl Sunnah brothers. And I accepted Islam, and my journey began in earnest. It was a toilsome, tiresome first 10 years, because it meant wading through all the insufficiencies and inadequacies of all the different jama in the greater Toronto area. I even got involved in a community called Darul Islam, where I stayed for two years. And that two years was a catalyst, really, in me making a transition to Madhabul Jafari. Why I say that, and why this is important, is because this catalyst from that Darul Islam community was very important in that the discontent that I found there was arresting and crippling to a soul and spirit such as mine. In that community, the distinguishing characteristic was the relationship with the Imam of the community. His name was Yazid Abdullah. 
and all the brothers in the community afforded him a kind of regard and respect that was unquestioned. And as a young man, I had a lot of trouble with that, in that I could not understand how a man like myself, older albeit, perhaps more learned albeit, could warrant unquestionable obedience from the people who followed him. I was ridiculed, intimidated, told that I read too much and that I think my intellect is extraordinary and it was going to destroy me because it is my ego. I could not accept that because I thought the only quality that I had that was liberating, that broke my mental, emotional chains was my reasoning, my intellect. So I left that community discontented and afraid. The process would have it that during that time of me traveling on the public transport, one day a man came and sat down with me and was on the side of his face peering at what I was reading and he saw that I was reading a book on Islam and asked me if I am Muslim. I answered in the affirmative. And then he went on to ask me, what school do I follow? At that stage I knew nothing about the differences in the different madhab. And I could not answer him with authority, so I asked him how many schools are there. And he detailed to me the numbers and who they were by name and with some brief introduction as to the root of their status. And fortunately for me, he informed me of the esteemed Farhat Musawi and his leadership in the Imam Hussein Association, as it was called at the time. Needless to say, before long I made contact with him and that was the beginning of my real journey in Islam. Now for me, I never, never give to any human being accolades or hold them in higher esteem than what they should. What I mean is I do not exaggerate how I feel about people and what I think about their minds and their work and their personalities because human beings are human beings. They have high points and they have low points. But in the case of Farhat Musawi, the impressions that he has left with me and on me for 40 years plus are indelible. You cannot erase them because they are both emotional, psycho-emotional, and they are equally intellectual and spiritual. Bear with me, I will explain a bit. In my very early years in Islam, there was no mentorship. There was no real ikwan. Communities were defined by tribes and nationalities and ethnicities. Obviously, I am a man of color from the Caribbean. And coming into North America society, immediately it became obvious to me that it's a fractured secular society wherein people associate with each other based upon their securities or 
dare I say, insecurities. So wherever I went, I felt a certain sense of displacement. And I became accustomed to that because it was my reality. But strange enough, the first time I went to Farhad Musawi's house and to his gatherings, in spite of it being for the greater part in Urdu and in minuscule amounts in English, I did not feel ostracized primarily because of how he related to me. This man, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalt his station and bless him, never failed to give me information in copious amounts. In those days I would travel by the public transport. I would be going on the bus with two bags of books enthusiastically and I would begin the reading on the drive home which was often time an hour, an hour plus and it is from the wellspring of Farhad Musavi's heart and mind that my education began in earnest I read, I read and I read 